so they're going to need to be involved in building them. You've signed on to the Common Core and race to the top. Amazingly aggressive goals. When you actually read the Common Core, this state has not done ceremonial alignment. Your leaders, Rebecca Carlin, actually have read the document and understand what the level of challenge is that we're now asking of children and teachers. It's not for the faint of heart. ELA, we're talking about being able to read uh, Supreme Court briefs and legal arguments. The idea of doing, not writing about what you did on your summer vacation, but actually looking for evidence in, in non-fiction text and using it for argumentation and persuasion. This is really what used to be college writing, we're now expecting in middle school. It's a massive transformation. If you read the Common Core math, you need an adoption strategy because you can't adopt it all at once. If you start it in the seventh grade, the kids won't have any of the new content from K-6. So you're going to need a state strategy. K-2 is this, probably the place where the demands are now greatest from what was. We are asking K-2 teachers to actually understand deep mathematical ideas now. And in most states, very few people go to work with kindergartners who really are math people. So how to support K-1-2 teachers in ways that respect them, regular mortals with complex lives, right? and that do it in a way that respects their culture and love of children, that's going to take real creative design. It's something we have to work on in higher ed, K-12, and in the entrepreneurial sector. You think about the four assurances that the governor mentioned. Standards. There'll be every temptation to muck with them. Resist it. Because if you pull one string out of that ball of yarn, thousands of other strings will come out. Everyone will see it as a gold rush to get their personal agenda or their professional agenda into the standards. Go lean. There's so much in there, it's going to be nearly impossible teach it well for a few years, because most teachers will be learning it by teaching it, not through professional development. So don't muck with it. Systematically introduce it. You have a few years to do that. Data. You're finally going to have data systems that actually allow you to answer difficult questions. When you look historically at data systems, it almost feels like the state leadership didn't want to know. Now we can answer really good questions about what teachers prefer, why they go to different places. We know now the extraordinary importance of teachers' desire to return to the kinds of places they grew up in. And we know that salary is not the prime factor. What matters to teachers is incentives that respect their personal preferences and that feed their only work if they believe they can succeed. So we have a lot of work on tying new data systems to our teacher policy. Teacher quality. Teachers are going to be evaluated for the first time in part on what their students learn. This is long overdue, but it's incredibly difficult technically to get it right. So we're going to need to phase in this system with our teachers. And what we know from the people who have done this already is it generates tremendous teacher, tremendous teacher interest in professional development that's directly aligned with how they're going to be paid. So this is a big change because teachers usually hate professional development except for the 20% who love it. And there's 20% who go to everything and 80% who stay away from it. What you're going to see as we learned in Washington, D.C. and Hillsborough, Florida, is that all teachers are going to want now to know what they can do to address the things and how they're being evaluated. And then turn around. Turnaround is tricky because it's so easy to focus on terrible schools. It's important to focus on why those terrible schools were ever allowed to exist. It's a wonderful thing to say, that school is terrible, we're going to fire the people, we're going to go in there and turn it around. Much better to ask harder questions, as Pete Gorman and Ann Clark have done, is how that school actually came to be. Who were the clowns who actually put all the teachers that no one wanted to work with in the same building? with kids whose parents had very little influence. 
That's a far more difficult question to answer. It gets at the heart of equity. You look at the beautiful turnaround examples in Charlotte, and we actually know it can be done. So I want to end, not as I originally planned, but by thinking about uh, some of the comments that Leslie Winter made about education as a public good rather than a private good. It's something about rhetoric. When you look at the STEM agenda now, much of it is framed in terms of international competitiveness and workforce development. Well, I want to tell you something. My students, frankly, do not care a whit about best in Japan or Finland. They don't want to do that. In sports, they do. They want to kill them. <laughs> but not in other things. What students want now, and we know this from UCLA's surnames of freshman life, students want a healthier planet, they want healthier, healthier communities, and right this year they want healthier economies. And it's in, unimaginable to do that without science and mathematics. We need to speak to students about their goals and anchor the curriculum in things that have value for our country. Now, I am a mathematician. I care about mathematics and science. I'm an American and I care about our country. One of the effects of the standards movement that we should have seen but didn't is that it would lead to the almost complete elimination of civics in our school. How many of your students in North Carolina schools could actually pass the test that you have to take to become a citizen? I think you'd find it's a very small number. Arts and music have almost totally disappeared. When I visited schools in North Carolina for the last few months, I was stunned to see the large number of Latinos in them. Many of the schools I was in were now half Latino. You have enormous diversity in the state now, new kinds of diversity. And art and music are the subjects that allow you to see things through other people's eyes. Those subjects are going to be critical for building the community the commitment to the state and the future and the commitment to the country. Uh, Bill Harrison and I work for the Military Child Education Coalition and I got to interview the Joint Chiefs. This is the first time in our nation's history when more than half the people who go into any branch of the armed services actually have families in that branch. The military is becoming increasingly isolated and fewer and fewer of our children are standing up as warriors for our country. It's civics education that teaches love of country, that develops citizenship, that's key for our future. But if you go to schools, there's a lot of math and science, and there needs to be a lot more. But we need to maintain a healthy, healthy balance. The purposes of education, the broad ones that you laid out, Thomas Jefferson, now stripped out of our history standards because our state bad boy sees that it is a traitor, because of his ideas of separation of church and state, they actually removed him from our state standards and added Phyllis Schlafly and Moses as required Americans in the shaping of American government. This is Thomas Jefferson. We see how right he was. <laughs> <laughs> so I ask that when you think about the massive challenges in front, we keep the urgency and focus teachers on the strengths so that every teacher and administrator has at the forefront of their mind what they've succeeded at and how far we've come, that the public purposes of education remain at the forefront, that we don't suppress the arts and music in a time when they're incredibly important for global understanding, and that we think about the core role of producing citizens for our country and people who step up and defend it and fight for it with their lives. That comes from teaching people to be proud of the country and to take responsibility for its strengths, weaknesses, and its needs. Thank you.